This video is about bearing angles, course angles, and finding vector components given just an angle and a magnitude. All right, so let's talk about this. Vector angles are what we consider our traditional angles that are measured from standard position. Remember, zero degrees here, 90, 180, 270, 360, okay? Standard angles always start here and measure around, right? They go counterclockwise. That's what, we, what we're talking about when we say vector angles. Now, bearing angles or course angles are given with a different standard in mind. Okay, they're navigational angles that are measured from due north. So north is zero degrees. East is 90 degrees. South is 180 degrees. West is 270 degrees. And then you're back to 360. Okay, so that's a little weird but what happens is it's going to be measured based on this term and um, it's measured from the north-south line okay so this is like home base everything that goes from here so when they give you an angle let's say let's say it's south 36 degrees east okay well southeast is down here right 36 degrees however is this part right here okay if I want to know what the vector angle is, I have to do some calculating. All right, so let's think. I need to know what the angle is all the way around to here, okay? So there's more than one way I could go about that. I know from my vector angles that this right here is 270 degrees. And if I just add the 36, I would get there. So 270 plus 36 gives me 306 degrees. So that's my vector angle. It's the same angle as the bearing south 66, south 36 east. I hope that makes a little sense. So let's try another one. Let's say they give me, um, let's just do another south angle, south 72 degrees west. Okay, well that's this down here. But the 72 degrees is this right here. Okay. I need to find the vector angle that correlates. So the, the angle that goes this way. Okay, what's the measurement of that angle? Well, I know right here is 180, right? Here is 270. So if I take 270 in this case and subtract 72, I will get the actual angle that I need. So The vector angle would be 198 degrees, okay? The course angle is south 72 west. I hope that makes some sense. So, draw angle south 43 degrees east. Let's try another one. This is 43. Convert it to a vector angle, all right? So let's go back to the another one. Vector angle has to start here and go all the way up, okay? Well, I know this is 270, so all I have to do is take 270 plus 43, and that's my new vector angle. So 313 degrees. All right, draw the bearing 154 degrees and convert it to a vector angle. Now this is different. It doesn't tell us south or east, so we have to start measuring here. If this is zero, this is 90, this is 180, so that means 154 is in here somewhere, okay? So this measurement right here is 154 degrees. All right. So to convert this to a vector angle, let's think about this. Okay? It has to go this direction, right? All right. The part of the angle that's from quadrant 1, that's 90 degrees of it, right? So what's left down here 154 minus 90 64 degrees. So this portion is 64 degrees. So I can do 360 minus 64, and that'll tell me what this, what's left here. To 96. Now, there's more than one way to get there. That's just the way I, I viewed it. You could change it, change it up, but you should end up with the same vector angle. Now, this is important to be able to find um, component forms, because you've got to have your angle in vector form to be able to calculate correctly.
So it's a finding component form. If you're given just the magnitude of the direction of a vector, you can, can find its component form using the formula magnitude times the component form, the cosine of theta, whatever that angle is, and the sine of theta. Remember, cosine is always the horizontal or our x, and sine is always our y. That's why this works. Okay, so this is the formula you're going to revert back to each time. So here's how a problem will look. An aircraft carrier travels 100 miles per hour with a bearing of southeast 23 degrees. Okay, so if he's southeast, this is, and this is 23 degrees, the, the bearing, the magnitude, I'm sorry, the speed, is 100 miles per hour. That's my magnitude. Now, the first thing I have to do before I can go any further is find the angle, vector angle. All right, well, I know this is 270, so I just take 270 at 23, and I get 293 degrees. That is the angle I have to use in my problem. So if I'm using this formula, I take the magnitude times my component form with cosines and sine. So I take the cosine of 293 degrees and the sine of 293 degrees. And so I'm going to pop this in the calculator. What I'm going to do is type in 100 times the cosine of 293 And we're going to remember rounding to one decimal place. So this is going to give me 39.1. And then I'm going to do 100 times the sine of 293. And that gives me negative 92.1. Okay, that is the component form of my vector. All right, I hope that makes some sense how we got there with cosines and sines that gave us our x and our y components. All right, let's try another one. An arrow travels 250 miles an hour with a bearing of north 57 degrees west, okay? Northwest is this direction, but remember the bearing angle is 57 right there. First thing I have to do is convert that to a vector angle starting here at zero degrees. So if I measure this way, what I really only have to do is take 90 plus 57 that gives me 147 degrees. That's my vector angle. Remember, the formula says the magnitude times the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. That will give us our component vector. So magnitude is the 250. So it's now times the cosine of 147 times the sine of 147. So this is the kind of work I'm going to be looking for in your, in your uh, Assignments. I know you can do the calculations in the calculator, but I need to see these steps played out for me. When I do that, I get negative 209.7, and then 250 times the sine of 147 gives me 136.2. Okay, so there's my component form of that vector. All right, so <clears throat> planes traveling 500 miles per hour with a bearing of 194 degrees. Okay, so if I stop right here, I can draw the picture of the, the motion of the plane, right? Now, bearing angles, remember, if it just says bearing, it starts at the zero, and then I count around 90, 180. 194 is going to land me right around here, right? Well, if this is 180, then what's this space right here? Uh, 194 minus 180 gives me 14 degrees. So I then need to measure or calculate that into a vector angle. So I'm going to measure starting from here if I count around. Well, I know that right here it's 270. So I'm going to take 270, and I'm simply going to subtract 14 from that. So I get 256 degrees. That's the angle I need to work from. Now, to find the component form of just the airplane, remember the formula says this. I'm going to plug in the values. The magnitude is 500, cosine of 256 times the sine of 256. Plug these in. I get negative 120. Point, okay, this one comes out 0 0.96, so I'm going to actually round that to point, negative 121.0, and then 500 sine of 256. Gives me negative four, maybe five point one. So my 
vector for my plane is negative 121.0, negative 485.1. All right, now I'm gonna walk through the same process for my wind that it's gonna encounter. It encounters the wind that's 80 miles an hour in the direction of southeast. Okay, so sorry, southeast is right here. If it's, it's 60 degrees southeast, that means this part is 60, right? Now I gotta convert that to a vector angle, counting from here. Well, that's 270 plus 60, that gives me 330. All right, so calculate the component. Magnitude is 500 times the cosine of 330 times the sine of 330. I'm sorry, not times it. There you go. Plug these values in. I get 433.0. And then negative 250 even. This is the only time you wouldn't put a decimal because it's perfectly even. In this case, it is. All right, so I found the component form for the plane and the component for, for, for the wind. Eventually, we're going to learn how to put these together to find what, what, hap, what how does the wind change the plane's course, basically. Okay, for the whisk, I want you to try one, okay? Here's your story. You're in a kayak traveling 45 miles an hour along a river with, in the direction of north, 82 degrees west. Find the component form of the vector representing your motion. Okay, good luck, and we'll see you in class.